Good morning, everyone, and welcome to God's house, and welcome to our morning church service. Very special day for here at Trinity. We're celebrating our homecoming, and we're so glad that you all chose today to be with us and celebrate with us. Some of you grew up in this church, moved away for whatever reason, but came back to be with us today. And we really, really appreciate that. You're very special to this church, and we appreciate that you're here with us. I'd like to review the mask rules right quick uh, for those of you who are not part of the church. If you're sitting in the pew alone or with your family group, please feel free to remove the mask during the service. If for some reason you need to get up and move around the, the sanctuary or leave, please put the mask back on, and we would appreciate your cooperation in this respect. Thank you very much. In the way of announcements, uh, keep in mind that right after this service in our fellowship hall, we'll be celebrating again with a, with a noon meal, so I hope you'll plan to stay here with us and be part of that too. Are there any other announcements that the congregation needs to know about that I might have missed. Thank you. We have three birthdays coming up this week, and ironically, they're all on the same day. Abby Alleman, if you all remember, that's uh, Eric Alleman's daughter. I think she still lives in Louisiana, perhaps. Just graduated, I think, from LSU, but uh, her birthday, too. Sean Boyles is the second, and Specialist Ryan McMillan, who is serving our country in the Army at uh, Fort Lewis, Washington, just re-enlisted for another term. Another good soldier is staying to help protect us from whatever comes our way. Congratulations, Ryan, for agreeing to stay in our service. Very proud of you, young man. Anything else before we continue our service? Let's stand as you can for our call to worship. Page 110 in your hymnal. I'm sorry, I got it wrong. It's 858 in our hymnal. Psalm 146, 1 through 10. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, O my soul. Put not your trust in princes, in mortals, in whom there is no help. Death departs to the earth. On that very day, their plans perish. Happy are those whose help is in the God of Jacob, whose hope is in the Lord their God, who made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that is in them. Lord sets the prisoners free. The Lord opens the eyes of the blind. The Lord lifts up those who are bowed down. The Lord loves the righteous. The Lord watches over the sojourners. And the widow and the orphan. But the Lord brings away the wicked to ruin. The Lord will reign forever. Your God, O Zion, from generation to generation. We'll continue our service with a, our hymn of worship, A Mighty Fortress is Our Goal. Now we're on 110 in our hymn. Note.
Let's now say together our affirmation of faith, the Apostles' Creed, which you find on 881 in our hymnal. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sat at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Be seated. Our New Testament scripture this morning is from Hebrews chapter 9, reading verses 11 through 14. You can follow in your pew Bible if you wish. We're reading from the same version of the Bible, or you can follow it on the screens above me as I go through it. Reading from Hebrews. But when Christ appeared as a high priest of the good things that have come, then through the greater and more perfect temperance, he entered once for all into the holy place, taking not the blood of goats and calves, but his own blood, thus securing an eternal redemption. For if the sprinkling of defiled persons with the blood of goats and bulls and with the ashes of a heifer sanctifies for the purification of the flesh, how much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without blemish to God, Purify your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. Reading the outstanding in the uh, New Testament. Our gospel scripture is uh, from the gospel according to Mark, reading chapter 12, verses 28 through 24. And one of the scribes came up and heard them disputing with one another. And seeing that he answered them well, asked him, which commandment is the first of all? Jesus answered, the first is, hear, O Israel, the Lord our God. The Lord is one. And you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. The second is this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other com commandment greater than these. And the scribe said to him, you are right, teacher. You have truly said that he is one, and there is no other but he. And to love him with all the heart and with all the understanding and with the strength and to love one's neighbor as oneself is much more than all while burnt offerings and sacrifices. And when Jesus saw that he answered wisely, he said to him, you are not far from the kingdom of God. And after that, no one dared to ask him any question. These readings are the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. God is good. Kim will now have our youth message.
Good morning. I'd like to say welcome to all of you beautiful people today. It is so good to see this church filling up. And welcome to our Sneeds Grove um, United Methodist family. So welcome, please come back whenever you can. Whenever the pastor's here, just come on back. Anyway, so our children's message this morning. Well, with our lectionary, um, we are it's suggesting that we talk about All Saints Sunday. But I believe next Sunday we're going to do a little something about that. But today, being homecoming, I wanted to touch base on homecoming. And what does homecoming mean to you? Well, for me, homecoming means it's a time that you come back, you celebrate, you worship with your family. Now, this was not my original church family. This was the McMillan church family. My homecoming church would be over at Mount Elam, over at Antioch, some Hope County folks. But anyway, I consider this now home. But I don't want you to look at a particular church as being your homecoming family. Homecoming to me means no matter what's going on, any kind of troubles you're going through, our Father, Abba Father, God, that's our homecoming. That's who we will, who we'll, who we will return to in time of trouble. Not just time of trouble, in time of joy, in time of praise, in time of thanksgiving. That is where we go for homecoming. But one thing with our scripture this morning, Mr. Wilson read in Ruth, um, Ruth, it was chapter 1, verses 1 through 18. It tells how Naomi had lost her husband and her two sons. And Naomi had learned that the Lord had helped his people, and she realized she needed help. So what was she going to do? She went back home. She didn't stay put. She went back home. Key word there, the Lord. So she went back to where... He was. Um, and we have our church family to help us, to teach us, and to guide us. So we always have them. But Mark 5, 19 always says, Jesus did not let him. He said, go home to your own people. Tell them how much the Lord has done for you. Tell them how kind he has been to you. So today, when you leave here, if this is not your church home, welcome. Come back again. But go out in the world and tell everybody that you see how good God has been to you and that he's right here, he's home, your home with him. Can we pray? Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this beautiful day. We thank you for all of the blessings that you have poured upon us. We thank you for all of the beautiful faces that have, have attended, have, are here with us in this worship service. We pray that we can go out in the world and do your will, that we can tell all about you. We thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's stand, please, as we sing our hymn of praise. And we're going to sing the first four verses of this beautiful hymn. Oh, for a thousand tongues to sing, page 157 in our hymnal.
As we turn to our bulletin and our joys and concerns this morning, we'd like to lift up joys for those who are here with us today. And thank you for our visiting friends for being with us and our Sneeds Grove family, uh, Sister Doris and Sister Ellen are here with us today. And uh, good to have good to have you with us today here here at Trinity to worship together. Uh, we do we do we do the same thing we do over at Sneeds Grove. Uh, just a little, just a little bit bigger and uh, beautiful music this morning uh, that we're that we're hearing. Uh, how many of you ever heard the organ play before? Be- beautiful organ, beautiful sounds that come from that and the piano. Uh, thank you for those visiting friends again, and I do want to recognize in particular. Uh, we'll start with my mom here. Uh, she's with us today, visiting from Ashpole United Methodist Church, and my brother. Uh, you've heard him speak, and my dad is here as well. So good to have them with us as well. And um, my, my children are here today, so good to, good to have them here with us today as well. Also, my mother-in-law and my father-in-law, uh, the Silvers, are here today. Good to have you with us. And uh, all those folks that I called on uh, and asked them to come and be a part of it, we just thank you for, for showing up and, and, and being here with us uh, today. As we go to our joys and concerns, are there any joys we'd like to share uh, before we go to the Lord in prayer or any concerns? God dollar, so it's a little girl. Okay. In Nicaragua. Any others? I have a concern that my husband Jeff is not feeling well at all today. Pray for Dennis. Any others? to the Tunsil family. We did hear a good report on Billy Ray Jackson. He was in the hospital this week, uh, but he is home now and, um, and, and resting at home. So we keep uh, Billy Ray Jackson in our prayers. Any others? Well, let's go. Congratulations, congratulations. So that, that's Sam and, and Cameron, okay. Congratulations, all the way to Indianapolis. Very didn't, <laughs> didn't have to fly back, they were able to drive back. Hey, praise the Lord. Well, let's go to the Lord in prayer. If there are any, if there are not any others, and if there are some, by the uplifting of the hand, the Lord knows all about it this morning. Uh, those unspoken requests. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Oh, gracious God, we are truly thankful for this day, and we're truly thankful for all the many blessings that you have bestowed upon us. We thank you for uh, your love and your mercy that you have shown to us today to allow us to come and worship together. As we gather together for homecoming and, and we just thank for all the folks that have come home and all the, the new folks that have come to share with us and, and visiting and, and just lifting up God's praises today. We thank you for each and every one of them and we just thank you for your son Jesus who, who came and died and, and to give us uh, opportunity for new life that we trust that he is with us today in spirit that we share in that trinity of the Lord God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit today, sharing with us, enriching us, guiding us, leading us to show love to our fellow man and woman that do not know 
Christ as their personal Savior. If there's one under the sound of a voice that doesn't know Christ, Christ is love today, and he loves you very much. He loves unforgivingly. He gives us his love, and, and he, 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 he gives us that forgiving power through his death and resurrection. We trust in God today. We trust in God that, that he hears our prayers when we pray, and we trust that, that even uh, those unspoken requests, he knows all about them. And he can touch them right now. And we ask God to do that. Those names that are on our prayer list, we ask God to touch them as well. And, and the Tunzel family, we ask prayer for Dennis. We ask prayer for Billy Ray Jackson. We thank God for his, the joys that Todd was able to share in terms of a, a new goddaughter that was born. New life. As we look at the sermon title today we see new beginnings new beginnings here at trinity new life as we as we begin a ministry here to that that god has called us to and god has invited us to come into his house and and share the word to his people we thank you for that opportunity today oh lord we thank you for the opportunity to call and as we hear god's call in our lives we're called to to serve not be served, but to serve others. Thank you for those who are serving in not only in the church, but in the community, in the schools, uh, in, the, in the law enforcement, uh, in, in medical field. We're serving others. Those that, that need our help, those that can't help themselves, we're called to serve as God would have us to. Bless each and every one here today. Bless our, our service. Bless our music. Bless the word that is going to be spoken by your manservant. Open his mouth that he may speak what you have instructed him to say. And we pray all these prayers in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And we pray the prayer that the Lord has taught us to pray in saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. Before we go into our special music, I would like to, we have something for all the youth, we didn't give it out at the youth, youth message, but all the youth that are here today, uh, we want to share um, something with you for, um, it's not Valentine's, it's Halloween. Uh, Halloween, we want to give you uh, your Halloween candy if you didn't get it last night, uh, but we, we're we going to have this sitting at the back for you, and uh, we want you to, uh, if you are 30 and under, you're welcome to some candy. If you're, <laughs> if you're over 30, we have some peppermints in the back, so how about that? We have some for everybody. That's something for everybody. We don't pass these out. Thank you.
There was Jesus on the mountains, in the valleys. There was Jesus in the shadow of the alleys. There was Jesus in the fire, in the flood. There was Jesus always is and always was. There was Jesus. You ever been in those places that we talked about there? In the valley? How many have been in the valley before? In the alley? I've been in the alley. Uh, probably shouldn't have been there, but I was there. Uh, there was Jesus. Amen. And we acknowledge today our, our tithes and offerings, what God has done for us. We thank him for blessing us with his, his gifts upon us each, each and every day. And as we acknowledge these tithes and offerings, we give a portion back to God and we we have plates in the back of the church, and here as we exit, uh, you're encouraged to share if you can. Uh, lifting up the ministries of, of Trinity United Methodist Church and also the ministries of the United Methodist Church. Let us stand as we, as we sing our doxology, honoring those offerings found on page 95. seated just a reminder if you're if you're new here and you don't know where the restrooms are if we exit this door right here uh, in the fellowship hall area the uh, educational building the, the men and women's restrooms are, are located there um, as we as we turn to our bulletin our, and we have a time for for special presentation we want to take a moment to do a special recognition at this time And I'm going to do a little reading here before we get to that point. But I'm going to be reading from, from James, the book of James, chapter 2, verses 14 through 18 and 26. Listen to these words. What doth it profit, my brethren, though a man say he have faith and have not works? Can faith save him? If a brother or sister be naked and destitute of daily food and one of you say to them, depart in peace, be warned and filled, notwithstanding you give him not those things which are needful to the body, what do it profit? Even so, faith, if it hath not works, is dead, being alone. Yet a man say, Thou hast faith, and I have works. Show me thy faith without works, and I will show thee my faith by my works. For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works 
is dead also. Listen to this poem by Frank Whitley. Frank Whitney. I behold Christ in you. I behold Christ in you. Here the life of God I see. I can see a great peace too. I can see you whole and free. I behold Christ in you. I can see this as you walk. I can see this in all you do. I can see this as you talk. I behold God's love expressed. I can see you filled with power. I can see you ever blessed. See Christ in you hour by hour. I behold Christ in you. I can see that perfect one led by God in all you do. I can see God's work is done. Don't you see Christ in some folks when they're, when they're doing special things? You see Christ working in them, doing what God has called them to do. And we, and we want to recognize uh, someone today that, that has um, received God's call. And um, we know that, that they are um, um, making a move and uh, making a move from their current home to to a new home and uh, we just wanted to um, give them encouragement on their move and uh, as they continue to they're going to continue to serve with us but they're going to be going to be making a move to another place and we uh, we just thank uh, Mr. Ray if you'll come up come on up here a minute uh, we want to thank Mr. Ray and and Miss Bobby Lou for for their service here at the church and Miss Bobby Lou's not able to be with us today but uh, we want to share uh, just a little, uh, maybe a sort of housewarming uh, item for you. Um, and Mr. Ray told me a lot about uh, when we first came in, we got to talk a little bit and we got a lot of things in common. We like to work on things and uh, mechanic a little bit and uh, uh, just, just tinkering a little bit. And Miss Bobby loves to send cards. How many of you gotten a card from Miss Bobby Lou at your house? Yes, she, she loves sending out cards and, and sharing her love and talents that way. And, and Mr. Ray, Mr. Wilson uh, is our administrative council chair, and uh, he makes sure that things work in order here around the church. So we just thank you for, for what you and your wife have done in service to the church. And we do have uh, just a little something we want to surprise you with uh, while, while we're here. Folks, I want you to know I knew nothing about this. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, and I do a lot of things. Uh, I, I just do. So this is something to hang in your uh, front yard there. It says faith over fear. And we have another thing on this other side that says cardinals are, cardinals appear when angels are near. Oh, so I want you to hang that in your new, new yard over there. And I expect somewhere in here is buried something that says Duke. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, thank you, sir. The last thing we want to give you is... Um, we, we've been talk, we talk about old cars, and I have an old car, and we fix up old cars and sell, but Mr. Ray was telling me that he loved to drive MGs uh, as, as growing up and had several MGs, and I think we talked about even Thursday, you had a 64 MG that you enjoyed. So we found this print here, and it's, it's from the MG uh, Owners Club, and it's all the different types of MGs that were probably favorite ones around. So we'd like for you to hang that up in your office or study. Or, and, you, and this is an antique find, so it's not brand new, but it's, it's brand new to us, okay? So we wanted to share this with oh, you. you're very kind. So thank you. Those of us in the service that spent some 30 years, well, you move about 20 times during that period. So you buy a car, the next thing you know, you're on the way back to Europe, so you can't carry it, or you can, but you usually will sell it and carry another family car. So that's how I came about sports cars, I would buy one every time I came back to the U.S. in my 7, 11, or so whatever years I spent overseas. MGBs, that midgets, triumphs, and that kind of sports car became my favorite. That's well, this is something for you to remember those by. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. God very, bless you. You all are very, very kind. <laughs> Thank you. 
I had this um, poem here, this additional uh, writing I wanted to share with you. It talks about home and family, and it reflects on the rays in there, and it may, or may reflect with you. Listen to these words. It says, it's a prayer. It says, Father, I thank you that you have blessed the rays and their family with all spiritual blessings in Christ Jesus. Through skillful and godly wisdom is their house, life, home, and family built, and by understanding it's established a, on a solid and good foundation. And by knowledge, still its chambers of every area filled with all the precious and pleasant riches of great treasure. The house, righteous shall stand. Prosperity, welfare are in my house in the name of Jesus. Their house is securely built. It is founded on a rock. Revelation, knowledge of your word. Father, Jesus is the cornerstone. Jesus is the Lord of their household. Jesus is their Lord, spirit, soul, and body. We remember that whatever be our task, we will work at it heartily as done for you, the Lord, not for men. We love each other with the God kind of love, and we dwell in peace, and the rays are committed to you in your charge and trusted in them to your protection and care. I, I, I know it for certain that the rays can say this, Father, I know not what others may do, but as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. As we stand for our hymn of meditation, Love Divine, All Loves Excelling, 384.
be seated. This morning we want to share with you in the Old Testament lesson, which is Ruth chapter 1, verses 1 through 18. And it's found in your pew Bible on pages 235 and 236. In the days when the judges ruled, there was a famine in the land. And a certain man of Bethlehem in Judah went to live in the country of Moab, he and his wife and two sons. The name of the man was Imelech. And the name of his wife, Naomi. The names of the two sons were Malon and Chilon. And they were Ephorites from Bethlehem of Judah. And they went into the country of Moab and remained there. But Imelech, the husband of Naomi, died. And she was left with her two sons. They took Moabite wives. And one was named Orpah. And the other name was Ruth. And when they lived there about ten years, both Malon and Chitalon also died, so that the woman was left without her two sons and her husband. And then she started to return with her daughters-in-law from the country of Moab. For she had heard in the country of Moab that the Lord had considered his people and given them food. And she set out from that place where she had been living. She and her two daughter-in-laws, they went on their way to go back to the land of Judah. But Naomi said to her two daughter-in-laws, go back. Each of you go back to your mother's house. May the Lord deal kindly with you as you have dealt with the dead with me. The Lord grant that you may find security in each of your house of your husband. And she kissed them and wept aloud, and she said, and they said to her, No, we will return with you, your people. But Naomi said, Turn back, my daughters, why do you go with me? Do I have sons in my wombs that that they may become your husband? Turn back, my daughters, go your way, for I am too old to have a husband, even if I thought there was hope for me. Even if you should have a husband tonight and bear sons, would you, would you wait for them until they were grown? Would you then refrain from marrying? No, my daughters, it has been far more bitter for me than for you, because the hand of the Lord has turned against me. Then they wept aloud, or for kissed her, her mother-in-law, but Ruth clung to her, and she said, See, your sister-in-law has gone back to her people and to her gods. Return after your sister-in-law. But Ruth said, Do not press me to leave you or turn back from following you. Where you go, I will go. Where you lodge, I will lodge. You shall be my people, and your your people shall be my people, and your God, my God. Wherever you die, I will die. There I will be buried. May the Lord do thus, and so to me, as more the will. Or even, even if even death parts me from you. And when Naomi saw that she was determined to go with her, she said no more to her. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. And we say thanks be to God. Amen. New beginnings. It's clear to see that, that Ruth loved her mother-in-law, Naomi. And in this passage, we see Naomi's husband die. We see her, her two sons die, and we see that there was a famine in her husband's land, and they 
went to the land of Moab because of this famine. Famine means uh, there was no food in the area, uh, not able to grow crops, uh, it was probably dry, no water, no rain, and they were trying to find somewhere to find something to eat. If you get, if you get hungry enough, you'll go, you'll go where the food is, even if it takes leaving your home. And we see in, this, in these passages, um, uh, this is a time period, like to, time, like to tell the setting and the time and the place. This is a time period when the judges were ruling the land of, of Bethlehem in Judea. And so this time and this narrative was after the settlement of Cana, the promised land by the Israelites, and, and in between the time before the kings who ruled the Israelites as a monarchy. So we see the judges ruling the land. And we see that this, this, this family settles in Moab in a country east of the Dead Sea. And these, these Moabites didn't worship the true God, Jehovah. They, they worshiped idols. They, they had another God that they worshiped. But, but uh, Amalek and his family were there to find food. And they brought his family with them. And it seems like they must have made him, made him uh, okay there, to live there for a little while. But he died there. And his, and his sons died there, his two sons. And, and while, they, while they were there, it, it left Naomi alone with her two daughter-in-laws. And we see that story and retell that story. Uh, Naomi and Orpha and Ruth, they're, they're the only ones left in the family. They didn't say anything about any children, but they're, they're running up against some problems. Here's some themes that pop out in this, in this uh, story so far. We have a famine going on. We have a dislocation going on, and we have death going on. That still happens today. We have that happen right now. We have death in our families. We have sometimes we're dislocated into other places, and sometimes we have famines in the world. Sometimes folks can't get enough food to eat. Initially, both Ruth and Orpah show concern for Naomi, but, but Naomi attempts to persuade them to return to their families. Orpah does return to her family, but Ruth is loyal to Naomi. She returns or turns back to Bethlehem with Naomi. This will be a homecoming for, for Naomi and a new experience for Ruth, Naomi was going back to her home country. The famine was over. She was going to maybe go back to her family and, and be uh, with, with someone that could maybe help take care of her. Uh, maybe she was up in age. Her husband was dead. Her, her, two, her two boys were dead. She needed somebody to take care of her, to, to support her and the rest, rest of her family. She was going back home for a homecoming. Today at Trinity, we, we're celebrating homecoming and a, and a return uh, as we rejoin together in, in community of believers and we worship together. Uh, we, we left where we were from and we came here. For many, this is, it, this is a new experience, including myself. This is my first time at Trinity for a homecoming. Now, I've been to homecomings before. Uh, we have homecomings at school. Ms. Crystal and I talked together, and, and during homecoming week, we would, uh, we would all dress up at different types of uh, uh, outfits during the week. You have spirit week, and you would, you would have a football game at the end of the week, and you would celebrate all week getting ready for homecoming. At churches, you know, when we have homecoming, it's a special time when folks come back. Uh, we sing together. We eat together. We, have, we preach. And I was telling some of the folks that uh, when I was growing up, uh, we would have homecoming at Ashpole, and, then, and we would have a, a service that morning that would start early. We wouldn't have Sunday school. We'd, we'd have a service that would start early. The preacher would preach. We would go eat in the fellowship hall, and then we would come back to the sanctuary after, after lunch, and we'd have different groups come up here, and they would sing and, and minister to us in song. I mean, it was a pretty much an all-day thing. We're not doing that today. We're not going to. I know, I know I'm the only thing that's holding you between lunch and uh, <laughs> But we're not going to do that today. We're, we're, we're going to preach, and we're going to say blessing, and, and we're going to bless the food, and then we're going to go fellowship together. Homecoming. Seeing old faces. Even Lumbee homecoming. We, we have people come in from everywhere, coming back to Pembroke, to get a collard sandwich and get some grape ice cream. 
get. You heard me say get, right? They're coming back to get. They, they want it. Uh, they're they coming, coming to see others, coming to celebrate. It's a ce- time of celebration. So smile. We're happy to be here. And I'm happy to see you here because all these pews are almost, almost full. You know, we thank God for blessing us with you here today. Let's talk about Ruth a little bit. Ruth is committed to returning with Naomi, even though Naomi is trying to tell her, you better go back to wherever you're supposed to be. You're not supposed to follow me here. Uh, she, keeps, she keeps rebuking uh, Ruth. She tells her no four times. She says she tries to get her to change her mind. She tries to rebuke, rebuke her. She tries to reprimand her. She tries to admonish her. But Ruth continues to say again and again that I am going to stay with you, Naomi. You ever had anybody like that? They, they stay up under you all the time. They won't go away. And you say, well, I, need, I just need, I want to be by myself a little bit. Will you, will you go somewhere, right? You've, heard, you've had that happen to you before. But, but Ruth was going to support Naomi all the way to the grave. Naomi even says, I can't provide you with a husband any longer. If I had a baby right now, it would, it would be 20 years before we could grow up and get married. Are you going to wait around that long? That's not practical. Naomi is too old to produce more sons who could later become husbands for Ruth or Orpah. Naomi, like many others, considered the trouble she had gone through as a, as a personal and direct Punishment from God. You ever think you ever think God's punishing me, punishing me for something? I did something wrong, and God's punishing me, uh, punishing my family. We're going through some financial hardships. We're going through deaths in our family. We're going through sickness in our family. Feels like feels like God is just punishing me. But remember this: you don't have a curse on you. No, bad things happen to good people. Bad things happen to good people. The righteous as well as the wicked. God allows this. And God allows trials to come our way. Trouble does come our way. And and what we are challenged to do is to hold on to God. Call on his name when when those troubles come our way. I have troubles all the time. You know, you have things that just happen. Uh, It it may be a a student just act act up in your classroom and won't behave and won't sit down. That might be some trouble that's coming your way. Or or maybe you got a bill that you didn't expect, a tax bill that you got to pay, and you're going to say, where am I going to get this money from to pay this bill? Hold on to God. Trust in him. Call on his name when you have those troubles coming your way. Listen to these things to keep doing. Keep trusting Keep praying, keep believing, keep the faith, keep a smile on your face, keep showing love for yourself, keep showing love for others, keep reading your Bible, keep, keep coming to church when good thing, bad things go your way. God's going to send a blessing to you. Bad things are going to come your way. Keep giving God what's his. Even when you don't feel like reading your Bible, read it. Even when you don't feel like praying, pray. Even when you don't feel like thanking God, thank him for what you have. Aren't you thankful for something you have today? Maybe driving a new car out there. Maybe driving a car and you're not walking. That's a blessing to have, and God has blessed you with that. Even when you don't feel like singing praises to the Lord, sing. We didn't want to practice. We had a hard time getting together practicing that song this week, and it was tough, tough. We were about to give up on that song. But we hung in there with it, and God blessed you with it. I hope he did. And he, and he blessed us being able to share and ministry to you. Even when you don't feel like singing, sing. Even when you don't feel like encouraging someone, call them and encourage them. Even when you don't feel like it, tell a child. Now listen to this. Anybody ever seen the, the uh, movie Hit, Help the Help? Listen to this, what, what you're supposed to say. You is smart. You is kind and you is important. We, you are smart. You are kind. You are important. Tell somebody that. They don't hear it all the time. They need to hear the good news coming out of your mouth that Jesus told you to tell them. You're supposed to be an encourager. And we are called to encourage others. Even when you don't feel like it, work 
as you were working for the Lord. Uh, now, I know there's sometimes that Brother Ray here probably didn't feel like uh, calling an administrative council together to, to, to address a tough task that, that the church had to, had to go against. But he did. And he called together, and the Lord was with him. And the Lord is going to be with you when you come through those trying times. Work as you were working for the Lord. We heard that in the scripture today. Even when you don't feel like it, say amen. Can we hear amen this morning? Amen. When you don't feel like it, believe that you are somebody in God's eyes and that God loves you. Even when you don't feel like it, keep the faith. Trouble's around every corner, but listen to this. Trouble is around every corner, but what? Jesus is around every corner too. He's going to be there to protect you. He's going to give you the strength to be able to go through. Ruth is committed to her mother-in-law. Ruth is committed to her God. She learned about a new God, a living God, a God that answered prayers, a God that has a two-way conversation with you. She, knew, she learned about Naomi's God. And listen to what she said. She said, she said, do not press me to leave you or to turn back from you, Naomi, because where you go, I will go. Where you lodge, I will lodge. You shall be, your people shall be my people and your God, my God. Where you die, I will die. There will I be buried. She's committed to being with Naomi. She's committed to be, being with Naomi's God. May the Lord do thus and so to me as more as well, even if death departs me from you, I'm going to still be a part of you. When death departs our loved ones from us, they're still a part of us. We have those memories that we can share, those memories that, that we can cherish with our loved ones. Listen to the sevenfold consecration of Ruth. She, she was consecrated not to be hindered. She was consecrated. She said, where you go, I'm going to go. Where you lodge, I'm going to stay. Your people are going to be my people. Your God is going to be my God. When you die, I'm going to be buried there too. Jehovah, Jehovah God, not the little G-O-D, but the capital G-O-D is who she's talking about. And it's the same way for me here at church. Think about Think about the new pastor. New pastor is uprooted from his family, from his home church family, and he's placed at a church that he probably don't know a whole lot about. That pastors that happens to pastors all the time, and pastors have to have to feel that same consecration in their bodies to accept that call to serve. I'm not going to be hindered by a snake right here at the um, altar. We're not going to be hindered by bad things happening in our lives. Where you go, I'm going to go. If you're going to have something at your house, I'm going to go. Uh, if, if you, wherever you stay, I'm going to come visit you. I'm, going to, I'm not going to stay with you, but I'm going to come visit you. Wherever you are, your people are going to become to be my people. We're getting to know each other. Uh, we're not uh, kin and, 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 uh, and, 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 and kinship, but we're kin. We're brothers and sisters in Christ. Amen. Where you die, when you die, I'm going to be there. I'm going to be there praying for you, praying for your family, encouraging your family, telling them all the good things and the good times we had together and that, that Jesus Christ is Lord and there's going to be a resurrection one day that you will see them again. Do things in order as Ruth did. Listen to what Ruth did. She put God first. That's what we're supposed to do, put God first in our lives. And then next, we're going to put family second. We're going to trust in our family and going to be encouraged by our family. And then our occupation is going to come third. Put God first in our life. Just like Ruth consecrated herself to be with Naomi and be with Naomi's God. Like Ruth and like Orpah. We face difficult choices. In those moments, we are often tempted to go do something else, to give up on what we always believed in about God's goodness, about God's mercy, about God's love, about God's faithfulness. We're tempted to go back 
to the old way we were living. But trust in God. God loves you. Don't say nothing good is going to come my way again because something's good is a ride around the corner. There is hope in Jesus Christ. Don't say maybe God's not, maybe God doesn't love me after all. God does love you. He's just sending a trial for you to go through. God loves you. From Ruth's story, we learn what to do when hard times hit. Hold on to God. God does not change. Whether the times are good or the times are bad, God is able to turn negative situations around, to turn our mourning into dancing. Psalm 31, 11 says this, You have turned my mourning into joyful dancing. You have taken away my clothes of mourning and clothed me with joy. Are you listening? In the end, Ruth's choice of the God of Israel is greatly rewarded. Anybody know the rest of the story? Paul Harvey said, "Here, well, here's the rest of the story. Here's the rest of the story. Ruth marries again. She finds her a husband. His name is Boaz. Anybody looking for a Boaz these days? No, no. Uh, Ruth found her a Boaz. And they produced this child. His name was Obed. Guess who Obed was? One of the one of the ancestors of Jesus Christ. So look what he, look what God did. He took Ruth and put her where she needed to be. But she had to believe, she had to trust in God. The good news is today that Jesus is still in the saving business. Jesus loves you today just as much as she as he loved as God loved Ruth and God loved Naomi. Trust in him today and remember to call on his name when those trials and tribulations come and reminder that the altar is open for you. Let us pray. God help me to choose to embrace the new things that lead me to unseen blessings. Ruth didn't know she was going to get that blessing and she was going to be a blessing to God by producing a son that is the ancestor of Jesus. We thank you for this word that has been shared with us today. Let us take it out into, into the world as we go our separate ways. Let us receive Christ into our heart through the forgiveness of sins. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we do pray. Amen. Let us stand and sing our closing hymn, our hymn of dedication, The Church one Foundation, 545.
all hearts clear. Um, we will uh, bless the food here before we go around to the fellowship hall. As we dismiss, uh, if you go out this door right here um, and take a left into the hallway of the fellowship hall, we'll line up there. We do have uh, indoor seating and outdoor seating. If you will be more comfortable sitting outside, you, you're welcome to do that. Um, are there any other announcements? We thank everyone for their presence here today. And let's go to the Lord in prayer. Oh, gracious God, we are truly thankful for your many blessings. We're truly thankful for the words that have been spoken to us today through song, through the word of God. We thank God for speaking to our hearts. Thank you for each and every one that has shared their, their selves with us today. We ask you to go, and as they go their separate ways, give them safe travels, uh, give them your peace, give them your love, even during times of trials and tribulations. Let us continue to trust in you. And Lord, we just thank for all the, the good food that has been brought today that we're able to share together. We ask you to bless it as we receive it. Bless our bodies for your service. And we're just going to give all the thanks to you. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we do pray. Amen. for 